We know why you clicked on this video. I'm Colin. I'm Jake. This is Gas Guzzlers, and this is the Kia EV6 GT. Let's get into it. Two, one, hit it. Oh, the torque steer is so insane. That yeah. power is absolutely bonkers. How much power does this thing have? Like 500 pound feet of torque? 545, actually. All right, Colin, no one likes to know at all. Oh, but you wrote that line for me. What you're doing right now, it's called gaslighting, and you're not allowed to do that anymore. But that's besides the point. Like, how did we get here? Well, I mean, we just got off the 95, so. No, no, I mean, like, here, here. Oh, here, here. You mean like back there? You, you truly are a testament to the broken state of the American education system. I mean, can you even read? <laughs> For your information, I can. What? What is that? This is the story of how Kia got here. That's exactly. That's why I've been trying to say. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a car brand that wanted to bring a balanced package of value and sportiness to the market. But not everyone liked this disruptive force on the local playground. LOL, nice glasses, moron. Moron? More like super moron? Yeah. Your cars are dumb and we don't like you either. Why do you guys always have to be such jerks? Oh, so you think you can just come in and disrupt an industry that's been the same for the last decade? Fun cars can't be affordable. <laughs> yeah, stupid moron. Go back to moron land. Yeah, yeah, see you later, stupid face. <laughs> Little did these bullies know, our hero was about to hit the gym. Hey, you two. Check this out. Ah! The end. Let me see that. This this doesn't say any of that. This this is a cookbook. Uh, yeah, you're right. I uh, I, I can't read. Are you serious? Yeah, I, I'm not lying. But you know what else doesn't lie? The hips on this Kia. While I take issue with Colin's wording, I don't disagree. The proportions of the EV6 are simply mad. I'm not even sure what to call it. Is it a car, an SUV? I don't know. But what I know is this thing gets attention. From those wide hip flares to the illuminated rear wing, the geometry of this vehicle is simply stunning. That stunning shape is matched with an even more striking color combination. This runaway red is only outmatched for attention by the neon accents adorning the 21 inch wheels and the interior. There's no doubt about it. He knows how to steal a show. The EV6 GT isn't just pretty, it has brains too. The door handles present themselves to you as you approach and they melt away into that gorgeous body when driving in order to increase aerodynamic efficiency. The LED lights look beautiful but also do a great job of illuminating the road ahead. But don't think the GT is just some visual package. It is a true performance upgrade. You see those striking neon brake calipers? Those are not just for visual effect, that is an upgraded 15 inch brake caliper and Colin, I gotta say, I think it has some real stopping power. It does and not only that, but the GT has an electronic limited slip differential and stiffened chassis to really give it that sporty feel. And I mean, this thing can even out accelerate a Ferrari Roma. But you know what? We shouldn't give away the EV6's tricks just yet. It still has a few more cool driving tricks up its sleeve. But first, there's one problem that I wanna point out. And that disappointment, Colin, comes down to the lack of a frunk. Opening the hood of the EV6 is gonna reveal not very much room at all, and I don't think that's very smart. I have to disagree with you, Jake. And why is that? A frunk is very useful. You could throw all your smelly exercise gear in there, put some ice in there and some, some colas and have a nice cookout with your friends. Why, why don't you like frunks? I mean, that's not wrong. You're true. Those things are all very cool. But see, if they don't have a frunk, they can move all that electrical equipment and all that other stuff that's usually taking up cabin space and they can push it up front to give you more cabin space. Here, you know what? I'll show you what I mean. Go ahead and take a look down there. Wow, that is massive. You could fit a suitcase down here. 
And you got four charging ports too. I mean, that's that's massive. I told you, having no frunk is pretty sweet. Jake may be head over heels for this interior, and it is great, but it is also very different from what you may be used to. Sure, it has many of the normal features you'd expect, like the wireless charger and low profile shifter, but there is no mistake in the fact that you were in a Kia EV6 GT. From the neon accents, the special pattern on the dashboard, the interior GT badge in, and the neon green lights, the visual cues make it very clear that you are not in a normal vehicle. Not only is the EV6 visually unique, but its tactile features also remind you of this vehicle's sporty origins. The seat's aggressive bolsters grip you to the seat, and the neon green GT button is impossible to miss. However, the sporty focus of the car certainly isn't for everyone, as the seats aren't the most comfortable when driving normally. While the rear of the car has all the amenities you'd want, vents, a fold-in center console with cup holders, charging ports, the seats certainly leave a lot to be desired. However, not all is bad. While uncomfortable, the rear seats are heated and there is plenty of leg room. Given the EV6's squat profile and low roofline, I really thought that rear storage space here was gonna suffer. What are the numbers, Colin? So with the second row up, you're gonna be getting about 24.4 cubic feet of storage space. If you fold that down, you're gonna get about 50 cubic feet of storage space. Okay, so what, that is a little bit less than some of the competitors, but... Uh... And yeah, and it's not too much less. Of course, you have some good functionality back here. You have some pockets, you can pull the seats down and Jake, what's this? Ah, oh, that, I'm glad you asked. Is vehicle to load. Is that a blender? I know what you're asking, Colin. What is vehicle to load? No, no, Jake, I am not asking what is vehicle to load. That has been on all of Hyundai and Kia's electric products in the past couple of years. I am wondering why you just created a fire hazard in this parking lot. That's because it's time for Cooking with Kia. Welcome to the show where we make delicious smoothies using the power of the EV6 vehicle Jake, to load Jake, function. Jake, Jake, hold up. I'm, I'm sorry, I cannot do this anymore. Your need for attention is exhausting. I mean, we are in public in a parking lot and you've plugged it into this $62,000 vehicle. What? I, I, I can't with you, I'm done. I am so done with this. Why don't you just rip my heart out and put in the EV6 powered blender? Look, now that cooking with Kia has been ended halfway through the first episode of the first season, I can tell you what the vehicle to load actually is. So basically, you can plug an adapter into your Kia, and what you can do is you can charge other things, electric bikes, electric scooters, even your very favorite blender. Here we go, folks. Look, cooking with Kia has been renewed. Ah, uh, ah, uh, you're impressed. I know you're impressed. I know you're impressed. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. What what mood should we use? Should we use milkshake? I guess. Ah! So Jake, what do we have here? That would be the charge port, which is feeding the 77.4 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack. It's rated for just a smidge under 250 miles of range, and we've been getting pretty close to that with some of our more spirited driving in this vehicle. Um, but if you need a little more range, you pop this thing over from the sporty GT mode over into eco mode. There's about 20 mile range difference between those two modes. It charges quick too, which is really nice. So this has that 800 volt fast charging system. Can I go from a about 10 to 80% in 18 minutes with the DC fast charger, drop down to level two. That's what most free chargers are and the charger at your house is gonna be a level two charger most likely. Uh, that's gonna charge this thing in around eight hours. So some pretty respectable charging times there. Just one question, what's this button back here? Yeah, so you got two buttons there. One of them will close that little port door. The other one uh, basically overrides the charging schedule. So you can schedule this car to charge during certain times, like when electricity is cheapest, but by pressing that button, you can say, hey, don't worry about the charging schedule. Start eating up some electricity right now. Jake, I have one concern about this. Isn't that a CCS port? I had a feeling you were gonna mention that. Yeah, and I think with the recent news of Ford and GM moving over to Tesla's port system, one really has to wonder how widespread these CCS ports are gonna be in the future. Yeah, that move by Ford and GM really caught a lot of people by surprise. And now we don't know what the future of charging standards really looks like in the United States. But one thing we do know, this thing is a lot of fun to drive. So how about we talk about infotainment real quick and we get out on the road. Sounds good. 
The dual 12.3 inch infotainment screens are familiar to Kia and Hyundai owners. Competitors like the Mach E and Model Y provide a much larger interface. However, what Kia provides here is very functional. You can utilize the display either as a widescreen interface or you can pull out a panel, which covers a third of the screen and provides auxiliary content such as maps, a clock, or a compass. One place this vehicle beats its competitors is in the camera suite. The EV6 has an impressive drone view camera and all the views are crisp. The Meridian sound system has a solid mix. While it leans bass heavy, it works well for most music and podcasts. And of course, we cannot forget about the sounds of nature. Jake actually really likes this feature and I can understand why. Listening to a serene river is a great way to cool off after some hardcore EV6 racing. Speaking of EV6 racing, it's time to get on the road. All right, Colin, we can't talk EV6 without talking numbers. So, two electric motors, 545 pound feet of torque, and 576 horsepower. Yeah, and some of the craziest numbers here are the zero to 60. This thing goes zero to 60 in about three seconds. That is crazy. You know what though? I like the 060. It's very impressive. Three seconds, yeah, just over three seconds, yeah, yeah, yeah. But where this thing really shines is in the 30 to 60 range. I mean, you just slam it and you take off. Yeah, but Jake, to get all that power, don't you have to like jump through a bunch of hoops or something? Ah, no, you hit this bright green GT button and doing that unlocks all of the power, all those 576 horses of this car. Now you have six modes in this car. You have the normal, eco, and uh, sport modes. We're pretty used to seeing those. This vehicle has the GT mode because we're in the EV6 GT and that unlocks all of the power. That is my favorite mode, by the way. And then there's a my mode where you can select all the different, you know, you can choose parts of each mode and create your own mode. That's pretty typical, see? But this car also has a drift mode. Dr drift mode, what does that do? Ah, okay, drift mode, well, it's exactly as it sounds. It's gonna turn off the electronic nannies and let you, you know, drift. Now, turning it on is like activating a nuclear missile. First, you must put the car in park. After you put the car in park, you're gonna turn off traction stability control, and then you're gonna enter GT mode, and then you're gonna hold both regen paddles for three seconds. Well, Jake, that's cool and all, but I've ridden with you in this car in GT mode, and you've already been spinning the wheels, so I don't think I want to try drift mode with you. Smoothie? No. Colin's on to something. I've never felt a car try to rip the wheel out of my hands as hard as the EV6 GT does. You feel the wheel skipping around and searching for grip. Every time you slam on the accelerator, a smile just launches across your face. To make things even more exciting, the E6 plays all sorts of spaceship sounds when you launch it in the GT mode, and it makes you feel like Tom Cruise piloting the F-18 in Top Gun. That GT button and the performance it brings doesn't come cheap, but I get sad thinking about the fact that I will soon have to face life without it. I can highly recommend the GT trim to anyone looking at a Kia EV6 or a Performance EV. Something about this power feels slightly less controlled than other powerful EVs, and I say that in the best way possible. There's something so raw and thrilling and powerful about the experience of the EV6. With that in mind, you do get some elements of control, especially with the paddles behind the steering wheel. Those are your regen paddles, and those are going to allow you to change the amount of regenerative braking force in real time. So you go from no regen to full one pedal driving with just a few taps, no software menus needed. If I could pick one flaw with the EV6, it would be the lack of rear visibility. What's so puzzling is so many companies have fixed this issue by replacing the rear view mirror with the camera, but if that's my only complaint about this driving experience, I can confidently say this is one of the very best cars I have ever driven. All right, Colin, it is time to merge onto the highway. We're in a supercar, you know what that means. Merging time, let's do it. Here we go, three, two, one. And you know what? This thing pulls great at any speed, which is rare for an electric car. If you have a bad day at work, you take the exit onto the highway, this is gonna put a smile on your face and make your day okay. I do have to admit, during this video, I ran over our $300 gimbal. I was very upset, but GT mode made my day better. Didn't fix the gimbal, but it made my day a lot better. So, with that, this isn't just a supercar. It is also a daily driver, and part of being a good daily driver is good highway cruising. Now, I know this vehicle has Kia DriveWise driver assist. Calm, what's the lowdown on that system? 
So that's basically your standard suite of safety features. You have your blind spot monitoring, your forward collision warning, parking assistance, but you also have the Highway Driver Assist 2. Yeah, that Highway Driver Assist 2 is one of the best semi-autonomous systems on the market today. So what it's gonna do, it's gonna keep you centered in your lane. It's gonna also use the radar cruise control. It's gonna keep your distance with the car, you know, in front of you. That's pretty standard stuff, nothing too special. But what this system does that is really special is it will change the lanes on its own. So you just tap the turn signal and it will uh, check your blind spot and automatically perform a lane change. Highway Driver Assist 2 is an incredible system. Of course, we're just talking about the assist system. Did you check out the HUD in front of you? I did. I'm glad you mentioned that. That HUD is absolutely beautiful. Kia markets it as an augmented reality display. Um, now, when I think augmented reality, I think your entire vision is augmented. A way to think about this HUD and what that means is it's really just a gigantic HUD. Um, it's very large, it's very crisp, very clear, and it has a few cool features that most HUDs don't really uh, utilize yet. So one thing that's kind of cool is if you're using the Kia GPS system, not the Apple Maps, Apple CarPlay infotainment system, but if you're using Kia's built-in GPS, it will display the directions onto the road, which is pretty cool. Also, it's gonna display everything that the Highway Driver Assist 2 system is seeing on your HUD, and that is where the HUD really shines, in my opinion. It is an absolutely beautiful view. Well, Jake, this has been a great car. It's been a great day, but I think it's about time to end this. So what do you say we pull over and find a parking spot? Ah, we're gonna let the car find a parking spot for us. You see, remember how a lot of Honda Kia products have that remote smart parking assist where you use the key and you can move the car forward and backwards? This car, you can push a button, search for a spot, get out of the car, and it will park itself while you're standing outside. Want me to show you it? I have to see that. All right, let's go do it. Just a quick note on this clip, the EV6 performs much better in busier lots. When you have an empty spot between two full spots, the car just has more data to work with and it seems to park a lot faster than you're seeing in this clip. We just wanted to film this clip in an empty parking lot so that we weren't blocking anyone's way with the camera. But just know that this is about as slow as the vehicle goes and you're seeing it in suboptimal conditions right now. Yeah, into. that would be incredible. Yeah, like park in a narrow spot. We've made a mistake by benchmarking this against the Tesla Model Y and the Ford Mach-E. Kia benchmarks this against the Ferrari Roma. And when you drive it, you understand. This is not an electric SUV. This is a supercar that fits for people. I think we can highly recommend this because frankly, this was the most fun driving I've probably had since I drove that Lexus LC500 supercar. That was a proper supercar. This is the mo second most fun car I've driven, and it's two thirds of the price of that car, and it has four seats, and it's a great daily driver. I would highly recommend this car to anyone, and as of today, the Kia EV6 is becoming my new default recommendation for electric car buyers. I'm Jake. I'm Colin. You've been watching Gas Guzzlers. And this is the Kia EV6 GT. Guys, like and subscribe. Thank you so much for your support. We'll see you in next week's video.